few weeks ago, I made a shotgun tier list with my friend Yerda covering all the pellet shotguns in Destiny. You guys begged us to make a slug shotgun version of this, and today we're here to deliver. For a long time, the answer was pretty much just pick Chaperone or Duality, but both of these have recently received a bit of a nerf, which has tightened up the gap between the exotics and the legendaries. So first up on our list is a legendary slug from the moon, the Blasphemer. For pretty much every entry on the list, there's going to be something that's pretty consistent, which is that you want Fluted Barrel for the Barrel mod, Accurized for the second column perk, and Arranged Masterwork. There is one exception where we're actually going to recommend something a little bit different, and we'll get to that in a second. So on Blasphemer, we have a couple great options for improving our handling, and like all the other slugs except Heritage, Opening Shot is available, so this is great to see, and I think the best choices here are Threat Detector and Opening Shot. That means anytime you're within 15 meters of an enemy, you're going to get a 0.75 times animation boost to your handling animation speed. So Blasphemer is just going to feel snappier. And then opening shot is going to give you an added 20 range. So if you have 80 range on this Blasphemer roll, that means opening shot is going to bring it up to 100 range on your opening shot of attack. And you can just absolutely map people with that. Probably like 12 meter one hit kills or so. There's also a quick draw on the shotgun, which is of course a famous perk on shotguns, and it's a great pick if you happen to have that. And then the other one that's kind of interesting here is hip fire grip, which is something that's pretty common on a lot of these slug shotguns, and it's pretty cool in them because it allows you to perhaps hit a very easy body shot um, and clean up with a melee, or even if you get lucky, maybe hit a headshot while you're just hip firing. So that can be a pretty cool perk to look out for on some of these shotguns. And I'm a huge fan of hip fire grip and opening shot. It's on my favorite slug shotgun first in last out. And I just use the hip fire grip opening shot roll all the time. And it gives me like just free headshots. It's so funny and cool every time it happens. So Yerda, where are we going to rank this one with all the spikes on it? I think Blasphemer is honestly a B rank. And for all these slugs, we're probably going to just rank them S, A, or B because they're all so good and they're all just neck and neck. But what's going to set them apart is the like base stat differences. And with Blasphemer, the problem is that the competition in the kinetic slot is really high and Blasphemer just doesn't quite measure up to some of the other options you'll see later on in the list. Yeah, it's really interesting now. These shotguns have really been compressed overall, especially with the exotic options coming down a peg or two. So it's going to be really interesting to see where these all end up. All right, next up is Bone Chiller, which is one of the shotguns that came from Europa. This is a pretty cool one that has maybe a little bit of a divisive aesthetic. It has a little peg that shows up in the middle, and I personally kind of like it, but some people don't like it so much. I find it maybe makes it easier to aim, but uh, that's very opinion based. As usual, we're going to go with our fluted barrel, accurized, and range master work. And this one actually has some pretty cool perks, like it has firmly planted, and that's kind of neat for shotguns because you're often going to be sliding into engagements to activate that perk where you get a little bit better handling and uh, a little bit more accuracy, which is always helpful in Destiny weapons. Uh, of course, you also have opening shot like we had on pretty much every shotgun on this list, which is very, very good on slug shotguns. Yeah, opening shot is just the question of like, you know, is this slug going to go to the next level or not? And they all have it and so you should pick it for basically every single one of them. The other cool thing about Firmly Planted is that it synergizes really well with sliding, which I think is a thing that people are really used to on shotguns, like sliding into an engagement. And if you do that with a spread shotgun, you're just like really shooting yourself in the foot because it's going to widen your spread. But with slugs, you can still slide and reliably get those one hit kills or those cleanup kills, which is good. So Firmly Planted is a good choice. I think the other good choice here is surplus, of course, just to boost that handling because Bone Chiller actually has pretty low handling compared to the other slugs out there. And so it kind of hurts in that department. So I would definitely go surplus here or even threat detector. But if you go threat detector, then you can't go opening shot. So I think you still need to go opening shot and then you need to look for other ways to improve your handling with Bone Chiller, like quick charge or handling exotics. But as we've said in our other tier lists, Patty, it's just not really fair to rank something based on uh, exotic or a mod that maybe not everybody has access to. So I think that means we are going to put Bone Chiller in the B tier along with Blasphemer. Uh, I was going to make a joke B for bad. <laughs> wait, wait actually... then, I didn't even realize that. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. One thing I wanted to mention too is that just like our spread shotgun tier list, we're not considering any of these to have Ophidian aspects or Dragon Shadow, things like that, that drastically improve the handling without needing to buy it on the gun. Of course, you can use these and it's going to be a great pairing with any of the slug shotguns on the list, but we want to make sure that handling is something that we're considering for the tier list. So that's something that will be part of every single entry. Next up is the Chaperone, perhaps the most infamous slug shotgun in the history of Destiny and definitely one of the best looking. 
This has been a shotgun that I've absolutely loved for many years going all the way back to Destiny 1 and it's very fun to use in Destiny 2 although I think it's uh, kind of accumulated a lot of chaperone haters ever since it kind of rose to prominence <laughs> in the last few months. So uh, this one's been through quite a ride. It started out as it's always been actually a very good shotgun but then it had a little saga where there was an ornament that was greatly increasing the range um, by having a longer barrel which uh, our friend Fallout figured out and uh, ever since then it's been a little bit of a hot topic in the community. It's one of the best feeling shotguns to use for sure. It has fantastic range, handling, uh, gets the lightweight bonus, um, so a lot of good things going for it. And of course the most interesting thing is that it gets the Roadborne perk after you get a headshot kill which makes your next headshot kill uh, have even more ridiculous range. So um, it has gotten some big nerfs recently though which has kind of brought it back down to earth a little bit although I still think it's certainly one of the best shotguns in the game. So I'll let you to explain what's changed with our friend the Chaperone. Yes, the good old Shap. It was such a menace for so long and I think it kind of still is but um, that's mainly dependent on Roadborne now because the Chaperone without Roadborne using the Panama Ravine ornament is pretty much in line with other legendary slugs out there. And this is based on the February 3rd TWAB from Bungie, where they said the passive range buff for Chaperone went down from 2 meters to 0.5 meters. So long story short, Chaperone's range is coming much more in line with other legendary slugs, but the exciting part of it is going to be that Roadborne perk. So with Roadborne, you're going to get an increased range bonus, you're going to get more handling, and your rate of fire is going to increase. And just once you get that first kill, Chaperone is the best slug in the game as long as you keep your feet on the ground. And the other cool thing about Chaperone, if that wasn't enough, is that you're getting a passive plus 20 mobility. So for Hunters, you're getting that faster dodge cooldown, and then everybody else, you're just getting the increased sprint speed and increased strafe speed too, from the intrinsic lightweight frame. So Chaperone has been taken down a little bit in power, but I still think by far it's one of the easiest feeling shotguns to use. It just feels so magnetic and practically gives you free headshots. And on top of that, it's really great for going on sprees because of that extra range after getting a kill and then also the improved rate of fire. So I think even after the nerfs, we're still putting this thing in the S tier. There's a reason Chaperone still counts as a sniper rifle in a lot of scrims. All right, next up is our friend Glow's favorite, the duality. <laughs> this yes. one is pretty interesting because it is not only a slug shotgun, but it's also a pellet shotgun, depending on which mode you fired in. So if you're aiming down sights, it is a slug shotgun, and if you are hip firing, it's a pellet shotgun. This makes it very versatile and excellent for general use. And one of the big th problems with a typical slug shotgun is that if you don't hit a headshot, you will often die because someone else might have you know, a fusion rifle or a regular pellet shotgun, then they can get the kill on you. Whereas if you have duality, you can open up that hip fire option and get a nice pellet kill that's not going to be quite as far as like fellow winters lie in its heyday but it's still a pretty decent kill range um, from that pellet shotgun so it's very versatile and uh, an awesome shotgun all around it's so good it has the exact same handling stat as chaperone if you have the catalyst it only has four less points of range although that passive range buff takes chaperone about one meter higher for the one hit kill potential with the slug but i think the coolest thing about duality is just its inherent duality but um crash forgive me because the spread of the pellets are actually very similar to a precision frame shotgun, but their damage drop off is higher. So if you're trying to get cleanup kills with duality, it's gonna feel the same as other precision frames like Matador, but even a little bit better, which is just really, really good for if you weaken somebody with your hand cannon and then you wanna to swap to it with that high handling speed and then just hip fire it instantly, it's gonna give you some really forgiving cleanup kills, more than you would feel on any other spread shotgun. The other thing Duality has going for it is the On Black Wings trait, where if you get a pellet final blow, your precision slug is going to do more damage. And right now, I don't really think this perk is actually that good. It's just not really something that happens that often, but maybe that'll change in the future if it gets buffed. So we're going to rank this one just like the Chaperone up in the S tier. Definitely one of the best shotguns in the game, super versatile, and just a great pick for pretty much any engagement. All right, next up is the former DPS champion from the <laughs> Vault of Glass days, the first in last out. This gun's been around for a while now, and it's kind of funny because I think it really rose to prominence more as a PvE option in the double slug meta, but it's actually a pretty solid shotgun for PvP. I know Yerda, it's one of your favorites. It's my favorite slug. 
It's also because I have the Season of Rivals roll of it that's hip fire grip opening shot and then I can swap it to Vorpal from opening shot if I want. So I can just like do that at the end of trials or like for PVE or whatever. It's just like this all encompassing tool that I use all over the place. But I think the thing that I love most about it is just how generous hip fire grip and opening shot is. Like I just hip fire around somebody's general area and it'll give me headshots sometimes and it's just amazing. Or body shots, which is sometimes really all you need because 150 damage to the body is a lot. This one's kind of interesting because it actually has a lower aim assist stat than a lot of the other ones on the list, so you'd expect it to feel not so good, but I don't know what they do over there at Bungie making these Cyrus weapons, but some of them just feel way better than the stats would indicate, and the rest of the stats are actually really solid, but it's just kind of interesting that it only has a base aim assist of 27. Uh, of course, with opening shot, that's improved a little bit, but still it just uh, it feels better than it seems like it should on paper. Yeah, it just feels better than it is. And I think that's partly because aim assist is really good on slugs, but when you have opening shot going, it really makes up for that low aim assist and Philo just feels incredible all the same. Also, personally, I really love how opening shot pairs here with the role that we've suggested of range master work fluted and accurized. So opening shot is taking you up to exactly 100 range. And I just love that feeling of not wasting any stat points. So we tested a whole bunch of these different slug shotguns for the one hit kill distance for making this video. And we actually found it pretty interesting that slugs like the first and last out with opening shot and at 100 range could actually reach the same base one hit kill distance as the chaperone. So it's definitely no slouch in that department. And of course you can put something like an Icarus grip mod on to be accurate from the air, which is very, very nice. That's something that both duality and chaperone miss. So pretty cool in that department. So all in all, first and last out has really good base stats although it just suffers in the aim assist department, which is gonna take it down to the A tier for us, but if the aim assist were higher, we think this could definitely be an S tier shotgun. Next up is the Fortissimo, which is the new slug shotgun from the Witch Queen. This one is also a really great option, and of course we want the typical fluted barrel, accurized, and range masterwork, but this one has a ton of different perks to look at, so I'm gonna throw it over to Yerda as it's one of his favorite new weapons. It's so good. It has that same model as first and last out that I absolutely love. And then it can get things like threat detector opening shot, which is just incredible. It feels so good. But if you don't get threat detector, you could get surplus, which would be good for handling, or you could get steady hands, or you could get perpetual motion. So there are definitely options on the table to increase your handling a little bit. But your handling is already pretty good at 74. So even if you don't get a handling boosting perk, you're still going to be great. I think the main thing you need here is opening shot, and then that's going to take Fortissimo up to 100 range on the opening shot of attack, and that's just going to feel great. Although there are alternatives here, you could go for Elemental Capacitor on an Arc subclass, and then you could go for higher range boosting barrels like Hammer Forged or Full Bore if you really wanted to, and then maybe your Arc subclass is taking your handling high enough that you can afford those handling losses elsewhere. Also notably on Fortissimo is the perk Adagio, which notably can body shot people. So if you get a kill and you keep Adagio active by getting more kills, you can just keep body shotting people and getting one hit kills, which is like really, really generous on a high range slug. The other cool thing about this slug shotgun is that it actually has a lot of really great PVE rolls as well. You have stuff like Demolitionist, you have Adrenaline Junkie, that pairs really nicely together as a kind of a cool combo. Um, and then there's also things like Focus Fury for some extra damage. You have Wellspring to get abilities back faster, Vorpal Weapon for more damage against yellow bars. So it's really versatile. Um, and that's a nice thing when there's so many perks on the table. There's quite a few interesting rolls. We actually are going to bump this one all the way up to the S tier, just a little bit better than first and last out. And the main reason is that it has pretty much all the same things going for it that something like first and last out has, but it also has much higher aim assist. The base aim assist set is 57. So with the combination of great range, great handling, high aim assist, and all these awesome perks, we think it deserves a spot in the S tier. The only thing not going for it is that you're never going to get what you want because there are so many perks. But other than that, S tier for sure. All right, next up is the Slug Shotgun from the Deepstone Crypt Raid, which is the Heritage. This one got a lot of praise when it first came out, and then I actually haven't seen too many people talking about it recently, which is a tragedy because this thing's actually really good. It's, I think, been one of the best Slug Shotguns in the game for quite a while that kind of is under the radar. And uh, it's something that, you know, is definitely worth using if you haven't pulled one out of your vault for a while. This is also one that kind of goes away from the trend that we were talking about of having fluted barrel, accurized, and range mass work because this one actually doesn't have access to opening shot. So we think in this case, it actually makes sense to go for that range with something like Hammer Forged and make up for that range loss that 
you would be missing out on since you don't have opening shot, but overall it's still a fantastic shotgun. Yeah, I think Heritage is such a underrated pick right now because people might see all those PvE perks in the right two columns and be like, okay, this is for PvE, or just the fact that you kind of have to like do a bunch of raids and farm spoils and then get to the end of the Deepstone Crypt raid and buy a bunch of them and it's kind of a hassle to farm these things. But the cool thing about Heritage that really, really excites me as like an avid slug shotgun user is the fact that it can get 100 range at all times, not just on the opening shot of attack. So as much as I love opening shot and like recommend it on everything, I think one of the coolest things about Heritage is always having 100 range. So it's like you always have opening shot and your handling is still always at like 73, which is really high. So for the perk choices for Heritage, we think that Hipfire Grip is the choice because it's just going to make it really easy to land those 150 damage body shots. And then for the other column, we think the choice is Moving Target because when you aim down sights, your aim assist is going to be at like 78, which is really high and actually higher than Chaperone Aim Assist, which is incredible. So even though those perks don't synergize, we still think they're incredibly good. There's also some cool options here if you want to switch your roll up a little bit. So of course you have slide shot, which I don't think actually takes you over 100 maximum range, but that maybe opens up some opportunities for you to put more stats into handling and things like that. And of course it reloads a bullet when you slide, which is always super, super nice. Uh, you have killing wind, which I actually do think can go over 100 maximum range is if your uh, shotgun is built to go over the cap. So that's kind of cool for going on sprees. It's almost like a budget version of the Chaperone's Roadborne perk, which is pretty cool. And then there's also Recombination, which is pretty interesting, although I'm not sure how actually useful it is in PvP. But if you get a bunch of kills with your other weapon, like a Palindrome, for example, you can build up stacks to then get a higher damage uh, shot with your Recombination, which could potentially one-shot body. But uh, it's pretty impractical to actually go for this, but it's kind of fun for an uh, opportunity if you want to try it out. So all in all, even though Heritage isn't the easiest thing to farm, it's still a lot more targetable than something like Fortissimo. And that paired with its really high base stats for a slug shotgun and absolutely juiced aim assist, we think that takes it straight into the S tier. That 100 range at all times is just amazing. All right, next up on our list is the Sojourner's Tail, which is my friend Apathetic's favorite slug shotgun. He's a big fan of this thing and has probably 5 million kills on it from judging by his videos. Uh, this thing is a great shotgun with a lot of cool perks. Of course, we have the typical options of fluted barrel, accurized, and range master work to go with here. And we have opening shot and threat detector, which we've talked a little bit about on our other options. That's probably the go-to role if you could pick your perks. I think the coolest things about Sojourners is just that threat detector opening shot combo, which just feels amazing on slug shotguns. So opening shot is going to take you up to that 100 range, which is great. Then threat detector will make your AD handling feel even higher. The unfortunate thing about Sojourners is that it only has 35 aim assist, so that's a bit lower than some of the other slugs on this list, but 35 is still fine, and with opening shot, you'll still be pretty high up there. If you don't get opening shot and you get killing wind instead, you can still be pretty happy with that because killing wind for going on streaks with slug shotguns is a great choice. And then if you don't get threat detector, quick draw is still out there for you. So all in all, Sojourners has a couple different options for getting a good slug, and it's one of the best choices for the energy slot. So overall, this is just a great shotgun. If you still happen to have one in your vault, definitely give it a try. And we're going to put this one in the A tier. I hope you really enjoyed our list. If you want to see some more shotguns, definitely go check out Yerda's video on shotgun science. Like I said, that one's going to be a really good video worth watching. Make sure to subscribe over there when you're checking it out. And of course, drop a sub here too if you haven't yet. And up next, if you haven't seen it yet, we also have a full video ranking every pellet shotgun in Destiny 2. It's the video linked in the description and also on the right side of your screen.